In 97, I started racing pigeons when I was 17 on my first small loft in the roof of my father's house. The biggest influence in my life on racing pigeons, that's only one person, of course. That's my father. He told me everything I know. In 96, I started racing pigeons on my own loft. I won the first National Ace Pigeon Young Birds uh, in Holland with the Phenomeentje. In 2005 I moved with my family to Belgium. Uh, we live here now. I also started working in the company with the dive magazine for my father. And later also my sister joined working in the dive company. Well, my father has pigeons from uh, his childhood. He raised together pigeons also with my grandfather, the father of my mother. Then he got involved in commercial pigeon sport by uh, Jacques Tournier. He wrote articles for the Dutch magazine and Peorgan. He wrote articles for the dive magazine in Belgium. After, with six friends, he took over the dive magazine. Four remained, after two remained, and after only my father remained as the owner of the dive, the editor. My father only raced the extreme long distance, the marathon races, so we had to create the new family. We are good friends with Derek van Dijk. We got two sons from his cannibal, two full brothers of Golden Lady of Koopman. We also got a brother, a sister, and a child of Fineke 5000 of Flor Vervoort. They all still are now basic family, but our real basic pair is the Jarling Dondersteen. He's uh, a son of one of the two sons of Cannibal, paired with a direct Janssen brother's hen. And they are the foundation pair of my family. Their descendants won over 200 prizes, till, first prizes till now, I think. Descendant of the pair, a grandson, is the Propera. Uh, descendants of Propera won four or more nationals. Uh, two or three times first national ace pigeon, many top ten national ace pigeons. Friendship is a granddaughter of the basic pair Jarling with Janssen. The grandson of the Propera is uh, Chucky, my first national uh, Isodun this year. Another grandson of the Propera is Canon of Danny van Dijk, my neighbor. He was fourth national ace pigeon, winning three times first in Union Antwerp as a young bird. Two sons of Cannibal, both full brothers of Golden Lady of Gerard Koopman, are very important for my pigeon strain, especially the Jarling Dondersteen. We paired him with a direct Janssen hen from 96 and 98, and descendants from this pair, I think, won over 200 first prizes now. The foundation cock is the Jarling Dondersteen. It's a son of the Dondersteen, and the Dondersteen is full brother of the Golden Lady. They are grandparents of the Propera, the new foundation cock. Propera, his descendants, won at least four national races, many national ace pigeons from one till ten. Still in 70 or 80 percent of my family, you find the bloodline of Jarling Janssen. For the moment, we have six individual breeding pens and we have more or less like 30 to 35 breeding pairs. It's with my father's, but due to his lung problems, we moved the breeding loft to our place, uh, hopefully this winter. Normally we pair up somewhere in the beginning of December. The first round is raised in my loft, and also like 65 birds normally. This year a little less, like 50. Plus we have a part of the second round raised in my lofts. But as we have the breeders here next year, I hope to have a little more young birds for next season. For our own pigeons, the main thing is the race records. Like on the breeding loft, we now have four national winners, two Olympiad pigeons. We have a second national ace pigeon, all bred by ourselves. 
So for our own family, every year we try some new blood to bring in and to test it. And if it's good, it remains. If it's no good, it's out again. The most important pigeons in my loft mostly were hens. My basic hen right now is Athena. She's a hen from 2010, which raised herself in my loft. Hence, you cannot breed too many, so maximum six, maybe seven pairs a year. We have never used the bull system so far. Now with Chucky, and the first national lizard, and eight national bush as a yearling, and the fourth national ace pigeon, middle distance young bird, he is a cock, so it might be possible we pair him up with two or three hands every now and then, but not, not to breed like 50 or 100 youngsters a year. Last year was the first time ever we treated them for paratyphoid. Occasionally, maybe once a year, they get treated for canker. I pair my raised birds up uh, middle of March. They are breeding on eggs a little bit, depending on how fast they put the eggs, like five to ten days. And then I separate them and they raise on the widowhood system. They no don't uh, bring up a young bird, no, only in the end of the season. This is the cock section. It's one section with 20 boxes, 12 on this side and 8 behind the door. The door normally is opened, but sometimes I close the door for calm and control of the pigeons. The cocks always in this section, they enter and they leave the loft through the door or through the window. And the hens, they chain section. They come from the hen loft and from a race they enter the cock section. They get vaccinated for Paramexo, more or less. That's the only thing I do with the old birds. Then I start racing them. I go to control to the vet every two weeks. And when it's necessary, I give them something. Like this year, beginning of May, I treated them for kanker. And then I start with the yellow drops. Then also in the middle of May, two weeks before National Bush, they get three days treatment for respiratory disease. Everything went smoothly. I started with a really good result on Bush. Every race I raced, I won top 100 national. Then we had a bad race for Mont Luzon. It was released on Saturday, rainy weather. The birds came not home like the way I wanted. And normally I visit the vet, but then I blindly treated them. They got a pill for coccidios. They got a pill for canker. And they got three days treatment again for respiratory disease. And two weeks later, I won the first national isode. I have 20 pairs of old birds, cocks and hens. I don't have more boxes. And they raced all together. Cocks and hens, both from the pair, are raised. This is the hen section. I release the hens in the morning, the widowhood hens, at six o'clock if the weather is okay. And in the evening around four or five o'clock, they go out through this window. And then after training, they come into this section. It's the feeding section. During the weekdays, they enter, they trap this loft. They get the feed on that side. And then after feeding, after eating, they be moved to the rest section again. <laughs> this is the feeding section of the hens. So after training, they enter this small uh, hole. They come in, they get feed over here. This is the rest section. It's placed for 20 hands. And this system, the rolling system, uh, is made for this loft by German company. It avoids the hand from pairing on the floor so they can sit on it easily. But when they start to move, the things roll and the hands will fly up again. The hands are in this loft 22 hours a day. They train two hours, they get some feet. But for the rest of the day, during the widowhood system, they're always in this small loft. The hens I raise are paired with the cocks. On the race day, they enter the loft of the cocks. In 2016, I had a hen Godiva, and I had to pair her up three times in five weeks with different cocks, because I lost her cock. But she still got Olympic pigeon and second national ace pigeon, so maybe she found extra motivation in the new cocks. 
Before the season, I road train my old birds like four or five times. I start on five kilometers, uh, 10, 20, and then one or twice five kilometers. And then once they start on the races, I never road train them on the widowhood. Only on the end of the season when they get on the nest, I start to road train them again, like I explained together with the young birds. I plan on hit them but I do it a little bit different as the natural system. Willem de Bruyne told me the system. When they come home from the race on Saturday night, I leave them together. On Tuesday, I already put them two eggs. So the hens start breeding already. Also the cocks. The cocks won't chase the hens for 10 days. So the condition will stay much better when the hens race and also the cocks. The week before the race, I want to try to excel. I put them a baby like seven to 10 days already. The hens start breeding them because they've been like two or three months on the widowhood system and they really want to be paired and breed eggs and they start breeding and the cocks start breeding but most of the hens also put eggs after and also the eggs are fertilized but they're much more quiet and they're not chased by the cocks all day within a week or 10 days they fly almost an hour also the cocks do well when it's early uh, light in the morning like from half april end of april we start train the old birds two times a day in the morning, the hens start at 6 a.m. If it's light and the weather is okay, after the cocks, one hour, both. And then in the evening, from 4 or 5 p.m., again, one hour for both cocks and hens. I keep this till the first national race of Bush. And if they race each week, the, the tougher races, the longer distance, then they train one time a day, and then mostly 30 to 45 minutes is okay. After a hard race, the cocks stay at home, especially if it's a national race from five or 600 kilometers. The hens is a little bit depending. Sometimes I uh, send them to a race of 100 or 200 kilometer. Sometimes they race middle distance. My old cocks and hens, they raced this year Bourges, 487 kilometers, Chateau, 535 kilometers. After Chateau, it was uh, Argenton, 564. Then it was Mont Luzon, 560. Then it was Isodun, it was 530. After Isodun, it was Bourges again, but the hens just put eggs, so I kept the hens home from Bourges, but the cocks raced Bourges. Then the week after, it was Chateau again, and and then some also raced Argentum. The feed I give to my uh, racing cocks and hens is from Verzele Laga, the plus mixtures. In the beginning of the week, I give the low protein mixture Gerry Plus. In the night, they get 30 minutes food, as much as they can eat, and then I take it away. In the morning, they can eat 10 minutes and I take it away. Then in the middle of the week, I give the sports mixture Champion Plus. And from when we basket on Thursday night, Wednesday or Wednesday night and Thursday morning. It's a bit depending on the weather, if it's a tough race or not. I give them also the energy mixtures with a high fat percentage. At the end of the season this year, I lost quite uh, a lot of cocks. So I only have left like 11 or 12 cocks from 20 and like 18 hens out of 20. Normally during a, during a normal season, I lose like five or six pigeons. The selection for my young birds, normally I have like 30 to 40 left. 20 to 30 I keep in the old bird loft the next year and they are selected mostly on the race results. Like the young birds that race three or four national races, most of them stay as a yearling. I prefer a young bird with less results than a yearling or an old bird with normal, decent results. The old birds need to have a good results to stay. The most important thing for old birds is also, I think, the condition and the health. The hens raise easier. They are more calm in the basket, so they don't spoil too as much energy in the basket as the cocks. The hens can be raised more often. They can be raised every week, if you like. The old birds on the last few races in August are raised on the nest, on eggs and on babies, but they don't train in the house. So I road train then, and if I drive by car, I also take the young birds, of course.
And my winter routine for the old birds, after the racing season with the young birds, I separate the young birds. They sit in the loft with the aviary. Also, the old birds are separated. They bring up a round of youngsters after the season. Then they're separated, they're put together with the young birds. Cox and hands separated so they can molt. It's easy for me. I give them food, I give them water, a bath. But I'm a pigeon fence here in the winter of five minutes a day because the breeders, of course, are in the loft of my father. For young birds, the, they get uh, vaccinated from Paramexo. And after, uh, sometimes I repeat it, sometimes not. It's just a feeling and when it's time. Then they get a vaccination for pox. But the old fashioned way, the best friend of my father, Rob Hoekstra, is a veterinarian. He more or less retired. But when the racing season starts with the young birds, with the old birds, I visit him every 14 days. I let them check like four or six pigeons and if he finds anything we treat them if he doesn't find anything we don't do nothing normally before the season or when they, they have had a few races i treat them one time for canker but i treat them individual with a pill so i'm sure every pigeon gets the right dose and after i use the yellow drops to prevent them getting uh, canker again Normally I put it in both nose uh, holes, one drop. Last year I tried to put it on the corn, but I think the effect is less. I think it's better to treat them individual. They are weaned like around 25, 28, 30 days. Because of the breeders are in my father's place now, we wait till we have a, a group and it's, it can be five or six days age difference. And then they come all together to my loft. Many people darken them earlier, already February or March. I start only April 1st and I darken them until 21st of June, the longest day. Sometimes a day longer, sometimes two days shorter. Case Bozoa told me he did it that way. My loft is also a copy of Case Bozoa. We have a lot of good contact with him. But he told me he tried it and it was enough. So I tried it myself. And the experience is indeed till beginning of September, you can raise the pigeons easily with when they throw maximum two flights. I don't have lights in my young bird lofts, so I never done so. People like Willem de Bruyne tell me, oh Rick, you really should do so because you will get a form uh, boost. But as long as I don't have lights, I have never tried it. This is the young bird section. It's two identical sections here in the next door. Uh, when I win the youngsters, I have around 65 to 80 on the two lofts. When I split them up, beginning of July, I have more or less 25 cocks and 25 hens left. The hens are on this section, the cocks are on the other side of the door. In the aviary, they are let out and they trap in the aviary. When I uh, let them together for the race, for the motivation, I open the sliding door. And also, I put the lofts like this. And sometimes I can put breeding balls also behind it so they can get close together. A useful tip might be this. I use this to learn the young birds to drink in the transporter. And for me, I think it helps. I give them water in here and they have to drink through these things that look the same like the drinking system in the transporter. I start every year with around 60 from the first round and 30 to 40 from the second round. Normally around 40 I have left. Adino is for me less a problem, probably because I start later with the darkening system and also because I have the aviary in front of the loft so they get a lot of fresh air. The first round normally has no uh, feathers drop. The second round sometimes they drop one, two or three uh, flights. But my experience is like this year I had a cock from the second round. He dropped four flights before darkening. He stopped throwing the flights. And then now recently he threw again his first flight. Normally I use the corn cobs on the floor. They are in the loft all year. I also don't clean the small boxes for the young birds. This year in April I thought they had a little disease. So I took out everything. I disinfected the lofts. And then I started cleaning the lofts like three times a week. In my young birds, they get also the Vazela Laga mixtures. I start with uh, breeding mixtures and I quite long time give them till, till like April. 
at least. Then I start mix it up with Kerry Plus mixture and with the malting mixture. And then after when the season starts, I feed them more like the old birds with the Kerry Plus, the low protein mixture, the Champion Plus, it's sports mixture. And when the national races come, they also get the energy mixtures. Of course, they get grit two or three times a week. I let them out uh, not quickly. Mostly they are four weeks in the loft before I let them out the first time. First I let them fly in the loft when they fly good but then we are already May. I use the balloon to train them and then before I start basketing them beginning of June I try to road train them at least 10 to 15 times up to 40 kilometers. But I start very short like 500 meters, 1 kilometer, 2 kilometer step by step and especially when I train them up to 20 kilometers I release them. First I let them fly in the house then I call them in and then I basket and I'm train them. I go with the old and the young birds together up to 60 kilometers. We race Bursch on Saturday. I start training again like normally Wednesday, like 30 kilometers. But there are years when the weather is good. I bring them six days in a row up to 60 kilometers. That's about 40-50 minutes fly and that's the only training they get then. I do it because it's easy. When I have to release four groups half a day, and if you train them, you're done in two hours. But I know people like my neighbor, Danny van Dijk, he never road train his young birds after uh, he start racing. And he does well also. This year, my young birds, I did less road training and they also did very well. I won second and eight national age pigeon. I leave them together for a long time, so I stop darkening June 21st and then only beginning of July, like 5th of 10th of July, I separate them three weeks before the first national race. The normal preparation is they fly two times, maybe three times 100 kilometer, two times 200 kilometers and then three times middle distance and then the national race start. My young birds have, well, I have to count like six races training 100, 200 kilometers. Then they have three times middle distance, like three to 400 kilometers. And then normally they have four national races, starting from Bourges, 487 kilometers, Chateau, 535 kilometers, Argentum, 564 kilometers, and then Chateau, 535 kilometers. In between the national races, normally I don't race them in another race but I train them myself. If you uh, take Chucky, the first national is a done an eight national boost this year. As a young bird he raced 14 races. He raced eight times middle distance like three to four hundred kilometers. He raced Bush 487 kilometers. He raced Chateau 535 kilometers and he raced Blois. He raced um, Blois is like 480 kilometers. This was the box of Chucky, the first national he's done the eight national books in 2019. This was his perch. Uh, after winning eight national books, I removed the perch. I didn't think about it, but the results of Chucky went down. Then I put back the perches and then the results were good again. So sometimes the small things in the pigeon loft matter. They stay in the loft from beginning of September till end of January. Why? Because I'm busy with other things and it's, uh, it's most easy for me. They get a malt, uh, malting mixture. I give them like Bichol from Oropharma in the drinking water. It's based on Sedocol and they get a bath every week, one or two times. That's mostly everything I do. Three weeks before the first national race they're separated. I don't let them together before the races, only a few hours after the races. And then before the first national race on Bush, I let them together already on Wednesday evening if we basket on Thursday. They can be all night together. The boxes are split up so they can hide behind the petition. Thursday afternoon, when we basket on Thursday night, I separate them again so they get quiet and they will eat again good. I think the health and the condition and the quality is most important. I do a little bit of motivation, but long not as much as many other people do. The young birds fly one time a day. The hens normally fly better, they fly up to an hour, and the cocks, if they fly 30 to 45 minutes, that's fine for me. But, of course, always with the balloon.
I specialize on the long middle distance, the great middle distance. It starts at Bourges, it's 487 kilometers, so about 300 miles, and it goes up to 600 kilometers. It's the biggest competition. You get a huge number of birds, like 25,000 old birds, 25,000 yearlings in the beginning, up to 10,000 old and 10,000 yearlings later in the season. And it's a competition of all of Belgium, from west to east, from north to south, it's a national. I raced one time international Barcelona with one pigeon. I clock it, but two weeks late. <laughs> this is a nice map for us in Belgium because we can look for the liberation points. Like we have Sans, Orleans, Bourges over here. It's a classic race. And you can see, especially if you have the international races like Barcelona, Perpignan, Marseille, Barcelona, you can see how they find their way through the mountains with the relief on the map. My number one achievement is really hard to tell, but if I have to name one, probably it is winning National Bush with Cowgirl. Because the year before she won the National Race of Bush, she already was classified as first Belgian Olympiad pigeon yearlings in the Olympiad in Poland. 95% of the people would either sell the pigeon or put it in the breeding loft. And I decided to keep her in the racing loft for a year. And then she won first National Bush of 24,000 old birds, the biggest classic race in the Belgian pigeon sport. And to win it with such a pigeon, yeah, that was a great uh, achievement. This I won with the national race of Bush. It's a medal from the King of Belgium. It's a trophy from the unofficial world championship organized by Verzele Lage that years. And our third world champion young birds. We got the trophy and the thing to hang over me. <laughs> My ambition is to win more national races, but it's hard, of course. You have to need a little bit of luck. And also now I won two times second national race pigeon with the old birds in 2016 and with the young birds in 2019. And of course, uh, the goal is to win a first national race pigeon as well. If I would have to give advice how to be successful in the sport, I would say make a plan, discuss your plan with uh, good racing pigeon fans, your friends or people from your area and try to get some good pigeons from them, maybe eggs or late bread birds, but don't change your plan every year or every week or every month. Like in my system, I like to race the national races. Also, I select my birds only to the national races. I have had pigeons that the first eight races never won a single prize. And then the national races start and they start to do racing well. There are less pigeon fans here, especially in Western Europe. But if you look in Eastern Europe, there are more pigeon fans here, also more young people. I think making a combination of two or three persons and race together would improve the fun you have, but also it's more easy for a person to go off holiday for a week. I'm lucky with my neighbor, Danny van Dijk. If I go on holiday for a week, he will take care of my pigeons. How the pigeon sport looks like in 10 or 20 years is hard to say. I think we will have less fanciers, that's uh, for sure. The fanciers that remain will get more professional, especially in Belgium, you see it already now. Also more people from China and abroad, uh, like Jan Hoymans from Holland. He started racing pigeons in Belgium as well this year. So that's maybe a solution to get more pigeon fanciers from abroad. Further, maybe the one loft race world will develop more like in America. So 